Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Manhattan. Yes. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, choir. I forgot. I apologize, it's the week before Christmas, can you tell? <laughs> okay, I'll try this again. Good morning and welcome to Manahawken United Methodist Church on this fourth Sunday of Advent. <sighs> the announcements for today are in your bulletin, but I'd like to uh, put your attention to today. There will be a Sunday school pageant at two o'clock. Yay, come out and support our Sunday school. For Christmas Eve on Saturday, there will be two services at uh, 7 and 11 p.m. Bells, choir, and uh, youth are going to be at the 7 o'clock service. 
On Sunday, on Christmas, there'll be one service at 10 o'clock. So please mark your calendars. Volunteers are needed. We need someone to take over the um, er editing the uh, crossword bi-monthly newsletter. Uh, Edna has been doing it uh, very admirably, but she would like to hand it off to someone else now. So if you are interested, please contact Edna or Pastor Choi. Also, loads of love. We will be doing that on December 29th from 6 to 8 at the Magic Wash in Manahawken. Uh, it's an excellent ministry. Please come out and, and help us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> on uh, New Year's Day, there will be two services, at uh, 8.30 in the morning and 11 o'clock. So we'll be going back to two services on New Year's. Church directories available down in the Narthex. And the offering boxes um, will be available in January. Thank you to all of the families who have participated in the Advent lighting this season. Um, and altar flowers are available for, uh, for 2023, so please contact the church secretary, Kathy, to be able to um, honor someone. And December food bank. Please, hearty soups and saltines, please leave your donations in the narthex. Any announcements from the congregation? Pauline. Thank you, Pauline. Cheryl? I just wanted to let everybody know the poinsettias were not supposed to be here until this next week, but we got them yesterday and decided to put them up. If you are taking poinsettias, if you could wait until next week so that we have decorations for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, that would be appreciated. But if you need to take them, Start in the back of the church. Yeah. <laughs> also, also, I, I have checked. People have been asking about the calendars from Shin that we normally get. Um, I have been checking with them. They are checking with their supplier. They don't know why we have not gotten them. Um, but we will. We may not get them until the middle of January. But if you have another calendar, Marion, can't see you behind the... Thank you. Any announcements from the congregation? Yep. Uh, just a little reminder, uh, and that for the fourth day of the Easter day, so if you're running on need to do a little last minute shopping, we are prepared for you. Thank you. Anyone else? Great, then I invite the family up for Advent. Shines in the window for joy. 
were so many or sorrowful. God lights a candle of joy in our hearts. We wait together for a Savior who is Emmanuel, Christ the Lord. Hear the world, word of the Lord. The root of Jesse will spring up, one who will arise to rule over the nation. The Gentiles will hope in him. Thank you. Okay, you'll pre please rise if you're able for the call to worship. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. The risen Christ is with us. Please continue to stand for him 217 away in a manger. Please be seated. Miss Pauline, ch children's time? Thank you. Well, hello, ladies. I can't sit here. Where am I going to sit? Over here. Sorry, Steve. <laughs> yeah, bring it over here. Okay. Good morning, ladies. How are you today? I must say, you girls are doing an excellent job today. Sadie with the candles and Giselle taking care of the, the candles and also Ava in the choir. I just think you guys are awesome. I'm so proud of you. Aren't we proud of them? They're doing such a great job, aren't they? Yeah, let's pass them in. Yeah, praise God. Fantastic job, you guys. And I just want to also welcome all of our friends at home that are joining us this morning on live stream. We're so happy to have you. And all of our big kids in our congregation this morning, it's so good to have you today. Well, guess what? It's almost time. It's almost time for Christmas. And let me tell you, one of the things that we do at Christmas time is we gather with our families, don't we? Yeah, that's like kind of like what Christmas is about a little bit too. We gather with our families 
you know, and we hang out and we eat and maybe we'll drink some hot cocoa and maybe we'll like open up some presents and hang out and watch a football game. Do they watch football game on Christmas? I don't know. So maybe we can like do that, you know, and that's really cool, you know, but also God, you know, God has sent his son Jesus right to be to be our savior right and that's what he wants us to believe that he is our savior he has saved us from all of our sin is that correct that's right and also the bible talks about that if we know this and that jesus has died for our sins and we accept him as our savior then you know what that means that we're a part of god's family so not only do we have our family with our parents and our grandparents and our cousins and aunts and uncles, we also have God's family all here, our one big family, aren't we? Yes? Yeah, we're all one great big family here, you know? And we talk about that, you know, that, that all of us as Christians, you know, because we have that faith, you know, that God has sent his son Jesus for to save us, that we are all part of this family, you know? I know it's not working. <laughs> so, with that being said, do you feel like you have friends and family who maybe not, who know Christ and does not know that Christ has died for our sins, that maybe you can make them a part of of your family? Do you know someone who's that? Yeah, you do. Yeah, you, you can bring them to church. You can bring them to Sunday school. You can bring them here so that they can feel what it's like to be a part of God's family, right? And we can do that even as, even as big kids. We can invite some of our friends to church and join mm -hmm. us here so they know what that feeling is like to be part of God's family. Nina? Yeah, is she coming home? To be home for Christmas? That's awesome. I mean, it's so awesome. Maybe she can come to church when she gets home from college. That would be great. And so you could think of different ways that you can invite your family and friends to join us here as part of our church family, right? Because God wants all of us to to be here with him. And that's the greatest gift of all, right? Is to be part of God's family, right? So when you're sitting around your Christmas tree with all of your um, family, just remember that we also have our church family and God's family. And so we want them to be a part of our family as well. Okay? That's why when we bow our heads and fold our hands and say our prayer, we say, Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for allowing all of us to gather here with our church family at the Manahawkin United Methodist Church. Continue to watch over us as we go about our busy week this last week before Christmas. Remind us as we shop and buy gifts for family and friends that your son Jesus Christ is the greatest gift of all. And he is the reason for the season. Keep us safe, keep us happy, keep us healthy until we meet again next week. Amen. Thanks so much, ladies. <coughs> have a great week. See you soon. Thank you, everyone. <coughs> Thank you, Miss Pauline. Okay, if we can continue with the prayer of confession. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your loving kindness. Create in us a clean heart, O God. Restore to us the joy of your salvation. Have mercy on us and forgive us. May we pray. Amen. The Lord God is compassionate and gracious. 
As far as the east is from the west, so far has God removed our sins from us. We are forgiven in Jesus' name. Amen. Any joys, concerns, or praises this morning? <coughs> Pauline. Thank you. Uh, good morning again, everyone. Um, I just wanted to share a bit of good news. Um, for those of you who have uh, read the prayer request about Jim's dad, um, he had a very bad sore from his diabetes that was not healing on his foot, and we were really, really worried that they were going to have to take his foot. But God is good. They are going to take one of his toes. But that is a lot better than his, his, his whole entire foot. He is still on the IV antibiotics. Um, he is struggling a little bit with, um, you know, being agitated and um, some memory issues. But he is doing okay. So we're hoping that he will be home sometime this week with, you know, God willing. His um, surgery is today. And so we uh, would appreciate if you could continue to keep him in our prayers. You know, we really do appreciate it. But even though he's losing a toe, God is good because he's still going to be able to keep his foot. So thank you. Amen. Anyone else? <clears throat> Behind the column again. I have one prayer request. My cousin passed away suddenly on December 9th, and I would like prayers for her family and friends, and um, keep them in your prayers. So uh, I won't probably be finding out for a while what happened to her, but please keep the family and friends in your prayers. Thank you. Anyone else? Oh, all the way in the back. Make you run today. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Um, this, I just want to say, if you could uh, please keep my uh, my cousin Dennis Gallagher. Uh, he's got cancer kind of throughout his body. Uh, he lives down in uh, Cape May County and. Um, he, uh, he just, you know, obviously he's got a lot going on, and we just, you know, if you could, you know, keep him in, our, in your prayers, that would be great. Thank you. Anyone else? I got a card from one of our members, and I think it's worth reading. Dear Pastor Choi, and she says all these good uh, words, and, uh, and in the, at the end she says, <clears throat> yes, I did get to know God better. She was referring to our 2022 motto, Know Your God. So I was hoping, and I still do, that every one of us as far as this year, yes, I got to know our Heavenly Father better, right? You have a few more days to get to know him better, right? All right. Um, I sent an email yesterday about Judy Pancoast, and some of you know her, and some of us don't. But anyway, uh, she has been uh, suffering from dementia for some time and uh, so she's in uh, Zosh now so please uh, keep her and her family in your prayers. Another member Phyllis Bromiley she had a, a surgery uh, last Thursday and uh, it was successful and she's thanked everyone uh, 
who prayed for her surgery. And she is recovering from home. <clears throat> we talked about uh, uh, Jim's father. And um, let's bow our heads and pray. <coughs> if Jesus were with us physically, we would love to be seated right next to him or in front of him paying attention to what he's saying. Also, we would bring our concerns to your care. Mostly, we'll bring our physical health concerns, not just for ourselves, but for our loved ones. There's no one single Sunday service that we do not lift up someone's health concerns to you, Lord. This morning you heard the names, and there are many others who go through the similar situation, either for themselves or for their parents or grandchildren or friends. And it's quite encouraging to know that in the scripture, Jesus healed them all. So Lord, we humbly ask you to remember those names mentioned, and those people who need your healing. Yes, Lord, you ask them, do you believe that I can do for you? And every one of us will say, yes, Lord, we believe. So according to our faith, Lord, please restore and renew our loved ones to health. We are not just interested in our physical well-being here, we also lift up our eternal destination, destiny, if you will. Everyone needs to know, and we pray that everyone will get to know you and be in your presence forever and ever. So please remember our loved ones who need to come to you, Lord, in their faith. It's about time that they came back to faith. Yes, Lord, we are very grateful for this uh, Sunday morning service and your name, only your name be glorified and honored amongst us and fill our hearts with joy and thanksgiving and the assurance that the Lord is with us and he loves us and he will see us through. We pray all these things in your Son's precious name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Praise God. Thank you. Have you noticed that lately? Choir is doing a fantastic job. Let's give him applause. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rich Muller is in Florida, so I am filling in for him. Today's scripture lesson is coming from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 2, verses 8 through 20, printed in your bulletin. In the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today in the city of David there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. When the angels had gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds began saying to one another, Let us go straight to Bethlehem then, and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. So they came in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby as he lay in the manger. When they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been told them about the child. And all who heard it wondered at the things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary treasured all these things, pondering them in her heart. The shepherds went back, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, just as had been told them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Hard to believe Christmas is only a week away from today, and every place we turn to is filled with the Christmas spirit, the giving and sharing. Bells of the Salvation Army are ringing. People are filling the kettle with generosity and kindness. Houses are decorated with beautiful Christmas trees and lights. Stores are packed with shoppers. And the church will soon be filled with worshipers. Yes, indeed, I agree that it is a wonderful time of the year. It is the season of joy and celebration, the joy of and celebration of Jesus' birth. 2,000 years ago in Bethlehem, at the first Christmas, a different kind of celebration was going on, this time between heaven and earth. And that night, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared and stood before the shepherds and announced, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy which will be for all people. Would you agree that joy, the word joy, is one of the key words for Advent season? Around this time, everyone seems to be looking for joy, and we, the believers as well, we need and we want joy. Now let me tell you that we already have joy because Christ dwells in us, who is our joy, great joy, and eternal joy. That's why I titled Jesus the Eternal Joy. Have you noticed that in every Christmas season we sing, Joy to the world, the Lord is come. The verb here is come as a present perfect tense, meaning an action has taken place and is still in effect, meaning that Christ, the joy to the world, has come and is with us. 
The real question is, is it really your joy, my joy? Can we honestly say that we have Christ the joy in our hearts? Or do we simply and only confess with our lips, yet no joy in our life? Now, that question led me to study the word joy in the scriptures, and I'm about to share with you what I have discovered. First of all, Christ himself is the joy we long for. He is our joy. In Jesus dwells joy, and we find joy in him. He is a joy giver, not a kill joy. To everyone who comes to him, he gives joy. He never takes away joy from us either. In fact, he is the only one who can fill us with a true joy that satisfies our soul, with a true joy that transcends circumstances, and with a true joy that lasts eternally. Everyone who personally meets Jesus Christ will overflow with joy. Think of Mary, the mother of Jesus, for instance. She was a virgin, engaged to a man named Joseph. One day, Gabriel, the messenger of God, appeared to Mary, saying that she would conceive a child, not by man, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. It must have been a real shocker to her, wouldn't you say, being pregnant before the wedding? Unthinkable and acceptable either. Literally, it meant a serious breach of engagement and a great shame both to herself and to her family and even a potential death penalty being stoned by the village folk. Yet surprisingly, Mary took the shocking news from God with gusto, with praise, and great joy, the joy that transcended her challenges and even death. So much so that she declared, my soul exalts the Lord, and my spirit rejoiced in God my Savior. What about the shepherds in the fields? The story we just read this morning. After the angel of the Lord told them that Savior was born in Bethlehem, they left their flock behind and went to Bethlehem right away to check it out. And after knocking at so many doors to locate the newborn king, by the way, if you look at verse 16, it says, they found their way. Normally, we miss the true meaning behind it. Found their way, yes, what's that mean? Now, this is the original Greek meaning. They looked around. They did a thorough search, and they found where the baby was. That's what it means, found their way. So they finally found the baby and the family, as they had been told. So on their way back, returning to their flock, they were filled with joy and glorified and praised God for what they had witnessed. They would not exchange their joy with anything else in the world. One more group of people to whom Christ gave his joy was known to us as the wise men, the Magi from the east. By the time they arrived in Jerusalem from the east, they must have been exhausted from traveling hundreds of miles. Yet they too rejoiced exceedingly, the scripture says, when they found the Bethlehem star reappear and they went to the baby Jesus and worshiped him. So here's a question for you. What is the one thing in common among those characters I mentioned? Mary, the shepherds, and the wise men. Here's the thing. They all met Christ the baby in person, and they all had the joy, exceeding joy. Now imagine you and I standing before Christ the newborn king this morning. You too would worship and rejoice along with these witnesses, wouldn't you? What would you? What would make your heart rejoice? The feeling of awe and sense of wonder. Chosen by God to witness the greatest historic moment of all. Did you know that Christ's birth became the watershed moment in human history before Christ 
and Anno Domini in the year of the Lord. We are witnessing the greatest historic moment of all, the coming of the Messiah in human form. Indeed, Jesus is joy of our desiring, as Martin Janus wrote. He is the great joy for all people. Next thing I discovered is this, Christ's joy is for you and me. The joy of Christ did not stop on the first Christmas. It stayed with the followers of Christ. If you remember, Jesus' disciples were filled with joy again when they saw the risen Christ. The same joy also filled the believers in the early church in the first century and for the next 2,000 years and still does today. So this morning, Jesus our Lord promises that we will, you will, I will have his joy made full in ourselves. Jesus only promises what he means to keep, folks. He means to give his joy to every child of God, his gift to us all. God the Father also wants us to have Christ's joy. Indeed, joy is an integral part of our Christian life, not just in part, but in full, not just in good times only, but in bad times as well, not just around Christmas time, but all year round and beyond. Not just yesterday or today, but tomorrow and eternally. It is God's will for you and me to have joy, Christ's joy in our life. But here's the reality. Why is it that not many of us seem to have joy in our lives? Perhaps because we do not believe in our hearts that Christ has paid the wages of our sin once and for all. I mean, you could go on to the church for years, but still, probably you have not accepted him as Jesus Christ as your Savior yet. Perhaps we don't confess that Jesus was physically resurrected from the dead either. Perhaps we lack faith in the Almighty God with whom nothing is impossible. Perhaps we don't trust in God who is greater than any other problems we face every day. Perhaps we lack the sense of awe and wonder in our faith in Christ. Perhaps in our walk with God we lack the wonder of God's miracles or answered prayers. When was the last time you're so filled with joy when God answered your prayers? Perhaps, as I said, some of us never personally met Christ the living yet. Let me introduce to you one man who never met Christ personally until one night. His name is Blaise Pascal, the 17th century French mathematician and philosopher and theologian, Pascal. I quote from this book, although Pascal had a genius mind, he struggled with questions of the soul, beginning with the unbearable loss of his mother to a mysterious illness when he was three. He later developed his own illness that sapped his life. By the way, Pascal passed away at the age of 39. Ultimately, Pascal's intellect could not provide all the answers. On November 23, 1654, Blaise Pascal was reading the 17th chapter of the Gospel according to John. When he had a life-changing encounter with God, he wrote the following on a piece of paper and he had sewn it inside of his shirt until he died and he kept it as an amulet. This is what he wrote. From about half past 10 at night to about half an hour after midnight, just about, about two hours, fire, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, not of philosophers and scholars. Certitude, heartfelt joy, peace, God of Jesus Christ, God of Jesus Christ, the world forgotten, everything except God. O righteous Father, the world has known, not known you, but I have known you. Joy, 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 tears of joy. 
It was at this moment that Pascal knew it was not enough to know about God or debate his existence with the finest thinkers in the world. Rather, it was essential to meet God personally. Folks, you and I can have such joy, 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 and tears of joy when we encounter Christ in God's word and in the living situation as well. Finally, Christ only, and only he, not the world, can give us the joy everlasting. Christ's joy is absolutely and totally different from the world can give. The worldly joy is based upon our feelings and circumstances. It comes and goes depending on our moods. It is conditional and circumstantial. The Christian joy is different. It originates from God, it transcends circumstances, and it does not depend on our feelings either. You may ask, how is it possible? Because Christ's joy is not affected by time or circumstances, as Christ is not. So even amid our unhappiness, we still can have Christ's joy deep down in our hearts. It is the same joy that Apostle Paul talks about in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 8. He says, I am as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. Can you imagine what it means? I'm so sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. In other place, he also wrote, I am overflowing with joy in all our affliction. What's the secret, folks, that he could say that I am overflowing with joy in my affliction? The secret of Christ's joy. Christ's joy comes when we encounter and walk with the living Jesus in our lives. It comes from the assurance of Jesus as our Savior and Lord, and it comes to those who walk in all the way which God commands them each day. It is also the fruit of the Holy Spirit. I may just do more sermon on joy later on, but the bottom line is this. How can we rejoice that, you know, in all circumstances, because your focus should be on Christ, not on the problems, not on the situations. So let me sum up. How do we have Christ's joy once again? It is simple. First of all, invite him into your heart as Savior and Lord. Remember Pascal? He was a great theologian and philosopher, but he didn't have joy until he met Christ. Invite Christ into your heart as Savior and Lord and live according to God's will at any cost. Then you will be filled and overflowing with joy unspeakable. I'll uh, close my sermon with Mary. What do you think made Mary overflow with an extreme joy in this dire situation? She was about to be pregnant, all worrying about situations, you know, engagement and town folks and all other things. And she still was overflowing with extreme joy. I would say it was her attitude. After angel told her what's going to happen to her, this is what she said to the angel. Behold, the bond slave of the Lord, be it done to me according to your word. So be it, Lord. And that's the secret of Christian joy. Let's bow as and pray. I do not know anyone who is trouble free. We all have our own shares, Lord, if you will, of sorrow, sadness, frustration, despair, as we go through this, the season of joy, our joy doesn't come from the gifts. Our joy doesn't come from people either. Yes, they come, but they do not last. The, side, the other side of the coin, if these things do not happen, many of us do not feel 
joyful. But that's not how you want us to live every day. You want us to keep our eyes focused on you and Jesus Christ, who is our true and eternal joy. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Let us all arise and sing our middle hymn 215, the first three verses. To Mary engaged to Joseph, the angel Gabriel came. Fear not, the angel told her, I come to bring good news, good news I come to tell you, good news I say good news. seated. It's time for the offering. Ushers, please come forward. Please remain standing if you are able as we sing our closing hymn, same number, verses 4 through 6.
Fear not, for God is with you, and you share bear a child. His name shall be called Jesus, as offspring from on high, and he shall reign forever, forever reign on high. How shall this be said, Mary? I am not yet a The power of the Most High shall come upon you shortly. Your child will be God's child. As Mary heard the angel, she wondered at his words. Behold, I am and may she said unto her God, so be it, I am ready according to your word. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of our Heavenly Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Amen.